Hey everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss one of my study videos. Also, make sure you see the link in the description box below, which goes to a folder of free study notes, totally free. And what they are is they are the pictures in PDF format of all of my finished whiteboards. So if you want a picture of this board with all of the notes filled in for study purposes, just check out that link. Today we're talking about how does BT insecticide work? Now, if any of you are gardeners or you know gardeners, you may be familiar with BT insecticide. And what I think is so cool from a biology perspective is that we see, um, we see a lot of things that we learn about in class, things like selective toxicity and protein structure um, and cell signaling and receptors. And so we're just going to jump right in. I'm going to do this lesson in three parts. I'm going to tell you what BT is. I'm going to tell you its mechanism of action that really answers this question, how does the BT insecticide work? And then I'm going to explain why it's totally safe for humans. And, you know, I put it on my tomato plants and then my kids eat my tomatoes and it's no big deal. So very, very, very safe as an insecticide. Okay. So what is it? Well, BT insecticide, first of all, is the most common biologic pesticide globally. That means that it is a biological entity. It's not a chemical, right? It's not like DDT or something like that. BT actually stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. And if you've had any kind of microbiology training, you're going to recognize that word Bacillus. Bacillus thuringiensis. This is actually a bacterium naturally found in the soil. And so maybe you're thinking, what? We're spraying bacteria all over our crops? And maybe that totally grosses you out, but it's okay. You know, a handful of fertile soil contains more bacteria in it than there have ever been humans living on the planet Earth, ever, like in the history of Earth, okay? So there's so many bacteria in soil anyway, totally natural, no big deal. So Bacillus thuringiensis, that's the scientific name of this bacterium. I'm just going to call it BT for the rest of this video. Now, BT produces toxins. These toxins are proteins. They're a kind of protein, and they are called toxins because, surprise, they are toxic um, in certain circumstances. So these toxins are toxic to developing insects. Again, totally safe for humans. Totally. I'll explain why down there. Uh, each BT strain, remember we're talking about bacteria, so each strain of this bacteria targets different insect groups. So there are strains of BT that are toxic for this group of insects and don't hurt any other insects. And there are different strains that target these insects or these insects or these insects. Um, and it depends on the strain which insect groups they will be toxic to. Now, there are about 200, give or take, different commercial formulations, so commercial products. These are non-toxic to birds, they're non-toxic to fish, <coughs> excuse me, because each BT strain targets different insect groups. You can get BT that will target those pesky hornworms that are eating your tomato plants. I have personal experience with that. Um, but that are not toxic at all to friendly pollinators. So, you know, like not going to hurt your, your bumblebees, right, that are coming around to do the pollinating. Um, if you want to see, like, my, my particular experience with this issue, I do have videos on tomato hornworms where I talk about what hornworms are and how to get rid of them, newsflash, BT, um, and also a really cool video where I found some baby tomato hornworms. They were, like, practically microscopic. I could barely see them, um, but I got some really cool video images of that, or vi video images, videos. Uh, so take a look at those if you're interested. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action. So how do you use BT insecticide? Well, it is applied to the leaves of crops where it can be ingested, so ingested, eaten, by insect larvae. And what we're talking about here for a lot of crops, not all, is caterpillars, right? Like the hornworms, tomato hornworms, tobacco hornworms. Some of you will have seen those big, fat green worms eating your crops, and I know it's maddening. I've been there. 
But if you spray Bt insecticide, then um, that's on the leaves of the crops. They get eaten or ingested by the insect larvae. And those toxins that we talked about are activated in the insect gut. Only in the insect gut that the strain targets, right? Not in the human gut at all. Activated toxins then attack gut cells via specific receptors, okay? Um, so only the cells that have those receptors. That's why each strain can target different insect groups. Different insect groups have different receptors, and each strain is only going to be able to um, basically infect a cell. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, each strain is only going to be able to infect a cell uh, if it has that particular receptor that that strain can bind to. So those receptors are very highly specific, but when you've got one of these Bt toxins and it's in the gut of the insect which it targets and it has that specific receptor there, it will bind to that receptor and ultimately, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry for all the coughing, uh, it will ultimately create holes in the gut lining of the insect. So basically, if you've ever heard of like a human having a perforated bowel that would be holes in their in their um, large intestine this is somewhat similar right these toxins literally poke holes in the gut lining <coughs> of the insects ultimately this makes the larvae feel pretty terrible i'm sure um, and they'll stop feeding on the crop plant like my tomato plants for example they'll, they'll stop feeding on the plants really within a matter of hours, and they'll die in a couple of days. <coughs> and how do they die? Well, remember that these holes have been poked in their gut, and so these Bt spores, as well as the gut bacteria that's normally, uh, normally held within the insect gut, both the Bt spores and those normal gut bacteria can then spill out through those holes into the wider body cavity of these insects um, and create basically a bad infection. And that's going to kill the, the pests, right? The pests that are eating our plants. Now, I've said several times this is safe for humans. Now I'm going to tell you all of the different ways in which it is safe. First of all, human guts lack these receptors right here. So they lack the specific receptors that the Bt toxins bind. So there aren't going to be any of these strains in any of these formulations that can actually like attack the human gut lining. Also, Bt toxins are only activated by proteases, it's a kind of enzyme, by proteases in the insect gut. And the insect gut is about a pH 10. And so the toxins are activated by proteases that are only present in the insect gut. So like there's not going to be those proteases in the human gut to activate the toxins anyway. Also, the Bt toxins are actually degraded or digested, or if you know the kind of super um, scientific term, denatured, denatured in the human gut. So remember, the human gut is about a pH 2, highly acidic. The insect gut is a pH 10, pretty basic. And so these toxins, A, they, they can't get into our gut cells because our gut cells don't have the specific receptors. They also can't be activated because there are no proteases around to do it. And then, um, even if these um, Bt spores did get into the human gut, our stomach acid is going to take care of them so quickly. Also, Bt is sensitive to sunlight, okay? Sensitive to sunlight. And it breaks down on the crops in a few days. This means if I want my tomato plants to be safe from hornworms, I need to reapply Bt, you know, every week or maybe every other week. If it rains a lot, I might have to reapply more. Um, 
because Bt is going gonna, is gonna to break down in sunlight anyway. And so a lot of farmers will be adding Bt when hornworms are a common problem, um, might reapply a couple of times, especially if it's been raining. Um, but by the time they're harvesting the, the, the tomatoes or the crops or whatever, by the time they're harvesting the crop, um, this Bt has, has broken down because of the sunlight and it's not even there to it's not even there anymore. So these are all of the reasons why it's safe for humans. And then before we end, I want to add a cool biotech, biotech application. There are GMO crops. Remember, GMO stands for genetically modified organism. <coughs> you know, scientists, biological engineers, um, have engineered crops like you might have heard of B. T corn is a common one, where they have actually engineered corn plants, like the crops themselves, to express the Bt toxins. And so the Bt toxins are there being produced by the corn plants themselves, and that will stop these pests from destroying a corn crop. And so this is a way, you know, farmers that grow Bt corn, they can have, you know, field after field after field of corn, and they don't have to spray it every other week like I have to spray my tomato plants with Bt insecticide because the Bt toxin, it's already there naturally being expressed by this engineered plant. So, so, so cool. Um, and, and definitely a way to prevent loss of huge numbers of crops to pests and in a very, very safe way for humans. So that's going to be it for today. If you haven't already, go check out my video on to um, tomato hornworms and especially the baby tomato hornworms. I just think they are so cool. So do yourself a favor, see something gross, go check that one out. Um, thanks for watching Biology Professor. Remember to subscribe, get your free study notes at the link below, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.